Hiya, I'm Jasper, and welcome to your video review for Braveheart. It's a movie starring Mel Gibson. And also a little bit of the guy, uh, DuPont, the, uh, the cleric's supervisor person from Equilibrium. He's in there too. So if you recognize that yell, you know. All right. So, uh, as always, I'm going to give you the good, the bad, and the furry. This is a movie set in Scotland. I'm probably not doing a good Scottish accent, so we're going to move on from that. But uh, there's a lot of horses and some dogs in this. Okay? Cool. Moving on. So, as I said, this is set in Scotland. And uh, basically, the Scottish people want their freedom. And the King of England's like, nah, bro. Um, and they decide to fight each other. So, this is one of the classic movies that everyone needs to see. I think that... Everyone should definitely see Gladiator. Everyone should definitely see Braveheart. Everyone should definitely see The Patriot. And probably Troy as well. But yeah, so this is one of those style movies. If you like Gladiator, you'll like this movie. If you like The Patriot, it's basically this movie. <laughs> but this movie is set in Scotland. And then The Patriot is set in the Revolutionary War. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of similarities. Mel Gibson just wants to have a family, doesn't want to fight the war, wants to just, you know, be chillin'. And then evil bad guy from England fucks that shit up. <laughs> and so Mel Gibson is like, I'm going to wreck your life, man. I'm going to wreck all your shit, motherfucker. It's fucking on. I'm going to just destroy everything you love because you destroyed everything I love. And you're just like, oh, oh, I'm here for it. Just, just hit me with it. Do your thing, Mel Gibson. It's so good. So good. Um, so I love basically every minute of this, I think it's 178 minute film. So it's long. But it is so good, and it is so worth that amount of time. <laughs> you gotta watch it. Big, big thumbs up for this movie. <laughs> um, again, this is one of those movies that was made before CGI took over all of the large-scale fighting. So, well, possibly, they might have duplicated some rows of people to, like, add to an army size. I can't say for sure. It doesn't look like it to me, but, and if, hey, and if it doesn't look like it to me, I consider that a win, <laughs> even if that was CGI. But I don't think it was CGI. I think that all of these these mass battles that they had, I think, actually had all of those guys. And I felt like it was the appropriate number. Like, is it the 100,000 army of um, Lord of the Rings 3? No, but it didn't need to be. I think that they had the appropriate size. And I think that the number of battles and what they showed for the battles was good enough not to just be like, all right, and another large-scale battle. Like, they showed enough of them to keep it different, to keep it fresh, to keep it interesting, so that you can appreciate the what these battles meant to the people, and to also pump up how awesome our heroes are, and also how you know bad the bad guys are, and also how brutal these fights can be, without just overlaying it. Where it's like, and there was another battle, and another battle, and wait for it, another battle. I think that there was just enough battles, and I felt that they spent the right amount of time on that. And Mel Gibson. Oh man, his face. That moment. You know what moment I'm talking about, but when that moment happens and you're just like, oh, oh, oh man, like that, that is why. That is why Mel Gibson is one of the greatest actors, or was. I, you know, I haven't seen stuff that he's been in recently because, you know. <laughs> um, but man, he just, he knocks it out of the park. He does the badass guy really well but when he needs to have that feeling to make you feel oh my goodness does he do it well um and i really i thought that they did a very good job in you know relative to this to the length of game of thrones um highlighting basically the the infighting that was experienced with the the various scottish nobles and why they just you know why they'd been having for years trouble with the king of england because they were having troubles amongst themselves every time and just like how he comes in is just like ah let's let's do this type of thing so i don't want to give away too much i know that i've already talked about some of the battles and whatnot but like how things come about and who does what or who i'm, not, I'm trying to get talk around that because i want you if you haven't seen it you should after this review go and watch it after this review because if you haven't seen it already it's so good and even if you have seen it and you're like oh but i don't want to watch one of those movies because Rose-colored glasses, and it'll just look really terrible after all these years, and it just won't hold... No! Go and watch it, because it does hold up. It is that amazing. It kicked ass then, it kicks ass now, and you will have a good time. So, I love this movie, and 
Uh, I can't say enough good things about it um, <laughs> because that would spoil some things for you. So just watch and appreciate. They had the they had the correct scale for things. All the all the um, the clothing looked appropriate. Like it didn't look like somebody just got it from the J Crew catalog or whatever. Everything looked realistic. The music was fantastic. The action, the camera, the actors, um, just absolutely awesome. Uh, and and the dialogue and the writing, like everyone that they chose for their main characters were just absolutely spot on. And I don't think there was a wasted minute in this film, in my opinion, because everything everything worked and mattered and counted and dry and drove into the characters and why they were doing things and how things turned out. So this is one of those like nearly perfect movies uh, that that came about. So highly recommend it and that's really all I have for this one. Thanks for coming. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you at the next one. Bye!